Today is June 16th and we're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I like the way that the Apostle Paul takes the Old Testament and just opens it up to new revelation. You see, some people have this idea that, hey, that's Old Covenant and the Old Bible and I just, I just read the New Testament and I just read the words of Jesus. No, you see, if you don't have an understanding of the Old Covenant, then you'll, you'll never be able to fully appreciate the New. And everything we see in the Old is a shadow, which is a reflection in the New. So when Paul then begins to uncover this and show some things uh, that happen then, when, in fact, when he talks about, hey, when the Israelites walked through the Red Sea, they, they, were, uh, they were baptized into Moses and in that cloud in the sea and and then he says you know they were eating manna but that was the spiritual food that they were eating and they were drinking from the rock and that rock was Christ and and so it's amazing all the things that are in everything you can see Jesus written on everything in the Old Testament and this is what Christ did one time when he met with his disciples on the Emmaus Road and and it says that as he opened the scripture to them they said hey didn't our didn't our hearts burn within us because of the revelation of how the, all this ap applies. And, uh, and so Paul's highlighting all this. And, and then he says in verse 5, but with most of them, God was not well pleased. That, in, in, that even though they were the pe his people, the people of God, the fact is, is that God was not well pleased with them. And, and, and then he says uh, that these things are written for our example. The, 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 the writings of the Old Testament... The, the documented aspects of this were written so that you and I wouldn't have to do the same thing, wouldn't have to go through the same failures and, and you know, experiences that they had. And, um, and, and then he says to the, the intent that we should not lust, lust after the evil things as they also lusted. And so then he says, hey, uh, do not become idolaters. He lists several things. He says, don't become an idolater. Uh, don't be sexually immoral. Don't don't uh, tempt Christ as they tempted him. Uh, don't complain. I mean, he, he just comes down with all these things and, and why you shouldn't do that because of the repercussions that they went through themselves. And he says, listen, this is all written for our admonition. This is here so that you don't have to walk the same course of destruction that they did. So this is hope for all of us. And, and then in verse 12, he transitions it. And he says, therefore, remember whenever you see it, therefore, it's what's written ahead. And he summoned it all up and he said, let him who thinks he stands uh, take heed lest he fall. Now, the reason he says that is because we're prone to look at that in the Old Testament in hindsight and say, wow, they were such stupid people. You know, it was so obvious God brought them out of Egypt and the Red Sea parted and water from the rock and all these things happened and, and they didn't believe. And we think to ourselves, oh, they were just stupid, stupid people. And, uh, and, and yet he's saying here, hey, don't, don't allow pride to get a hold of you. Don't, don't think you're something uh, when you're nothing because uh, the fact is uh, uh, these are living realities. These are forces of good and evil. These are spiritual uh, uh, attacks against us. And, and he enters in, in this passage, very familiar. He said, no temptation is overtaking that isn't common to man. Sometimes when we're tempted, we think we're all alone. We think I've got to be the only one that's ever struggled with this. I'm the only one that's ever had the mental battles of, of these kind of struggles. And, and he's saying, no, it's, it's not. This, this, is, this is a common thing. You and I are in, in this fallen world and, and uh, everyone faces a, a temptation in every form. And, uh, but, he, but the emphasis here is that in spite of the fact that we are vulnerable to all of these attacks, God's faithful. That's the part I want you to see. God is faithful. And as we hinge to him, we'll stand. We will not fall. We're going to be overcomers. And, um, and, and, and we'll be able to escape. God's going to provide a way to escape. So even when the battle is, you're entrenched in the, and, and you just feel like, I don't think I can survive. You can survive because God is faithful. And then look down there uh, in verse uh, uh, 14 which he says, therefore, again, based on this conclusion, flee. That's the word I want you to see. Flee. Flee from idolatry. Flee from all of these temptations. But, but the emphasis here is that you got to run from them. You and I have to do something that even though God is, is, uh, is there for us and uh, that he's faithful, the fact here that uh, you and I have to make a decision to partner with God and flee Temptation, flee struggles, flee these trials. We have to be willing to turn from them and run. And, and all of our success is hinged upon 
our deliberation, our determination to do what is right. And then he moves into this area that everything we do needs to be for the glory of God. I, I remember growing up, my and, and Paul kind of talks about this thing, you know, hey, if you, he was dealing with Jews and eating meat that's from the market that had been offered to idols. And, and he's saying basically, listen, if, if your conscience is clear, then, then eat and don't be condemned. But if you feel stirred or convicted, then don't do it. And, and his basic argument here is, is that everything ought to be, in fact, that passage of scripture, verse 31, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do the glory of God. And, and if we can look at our life based upon that kind of, of a determination. You see, I remember a lot of times people say, well, it's a gray area, okay? Maybe, some, do you think this is right? Do you think this is right? Is this something I should do? Can I do this? And, and we're always looking for permission. But there's those gray areas. And, and, and rather than struggling, I remember my grandmother used to say, uh, when in doubt, don't. And I, th I found that to be very liberating. Because why? Why subject yourself to questionable things when you're not certain about it? But the whole area that would help to eradicate this battle is to simply come to the conclusion here is, listen, is this glorifying to God? If, if I participate in this, if I watch this, if I engage in this conversation, is this ultimately going to glorify God? And I want to challenge you in your walk with Jesus that you and I would examine our lives continually. I believe that's what communion is all about. Communion is self-examination, where we reflect on our life and we invite the Holy Spirit to put his finger on anything in our life that is displeasing to God or that grieves the Spirit of God. And we would say, all to the glory of God. Whatever you do today, whatever you say today, whatever you watch today, could it really be done in a manner that would glorify God?